name is Dwight Stroud. I'm a prisoner here. And I need to get out. Good morning. It's a beautiful day outside. Every day outside is beautiful. Come on now. Let's not start out the day being depressed. I thought I'd get a jump start on it, especially since it's so beautiful out there. Doc tells me that every day you're here, you're one day closer to being released. Feels that way already. Uh, look, I'm sorry. I don't mean to give you a hard time. It's not your fault. Cheer up. I'm ready to be shrunk down to size. How are you feeling this morning? Don't you mean do I feel crazy like I'm supposed to? But you think you aren't crazy? That was my attorney's bright idea. He pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. The jury decided in your favor. Some favor. I'm not guilty by reason of innocence. Innocent of what? You can't remember. I was struck on the head. I, 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 I don't remember anything that happened that night. So how do you know you were struck in the head? Then how do you know you don't deserve to be here? It's important for you to understand why you are here. What's important for me is to get the hell out of here. Now just give me the shot and let's get on with it. It's only part of what might get you out of here someday. If you know why you're here, that will help even more. So tell me. I do. I tell you every time we meet, and you always forget every time you come back. You forget lots of things, Dwight. No. <laughs> Damn it. I'm sorry, very sorry. I don't mean to upset you. You have a very good memory. That's why I'm so concerned you can't remember, even though I tell you every week. Look at me, Dwight. I'll believe you weren't crazy. I'll believe you're innocent. Just look me in the face and tell me so I can see it in your eyes. I'm not crazy. I want to help you live again, Dwight. Coming from you, that's 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 really absurd. <laughs> Why? What is it you see when you look at me? <sighs> then tell me this is what you see real. <sighs> no. Couldn't be. Why is that? Because if it was real, it'd be crazy. Don't feel ashamed of your realization. Be proud. Knowledge is a powerful thing. It's this place. I see things here that are insane. I try to ignore it as much as possible just to go on living. But every day gets worse, not better. I gotta get out. An unbalanced mind. It's like water. It takes the shape of its environment. Sameness and stability of this place. It's all that's holding you together. Holding you together. Holding you together. Uh, that's better. This hospital has had several remarkable recoveries. There's real hope for you here. There's real hope. She always comes to me after I get done with my head shrinking. Almost like a reward. I'm glad you're here. Glad to be here. I gotta get out of here. Soon. I don't know her name or her face. All that matters is that she's beautiful and intelligent. I can't really say if she's real or just more proof of my insanity. 
She's my ideal woman, and I hope part of my future rather than my past. She is my hope. It's time. Do I thank you? For what? Well, for treating me like a real person. I will be there for you when you get out of here. Always. He's a friend of mine. Sometimes I'm the only one he'll talk to. But at times he's unapproachable, even to me. Like the time when he pulled out one of his eyes. Hey, Da Vinci! Looking good! I told you to call me Van Gogh. Looking good is what you say to a drunk woman right before last call. Yeah, like I remember what to say to a drunk woman. So lend me your eye. I'm a bit short. And tell me something that I don't know about what I'm doing. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, maybe add a bird or two. If you, if you insist. Jesus. Why'd you do that? I thought that's what you wanted. Look, Dwight, you and I are insane. Much of what we see is cause rather than effect of our illness. That's why I took out my left eye. I didn't like what it made me see, and it was making me worse. But that's danger of what we see. This insane reality can look back and see us. I, I don't see them. Well, I want to paint what I see. My paintings are like x-rays. <laughs> yeah, or you're much fucking crazier than I am. Hey, what are those things sticking out of their heads? That's ectoplasm, rising out of, you know, out of them. Yeah, ectoplasm, yeah. Can you explain that to me in uh, non-psychobabble, please? Ectoplasm is a physical manifestation of spiritual matter. It can escape from the body through any orifice. Wow, you're both a lot crazier than I am. That's very interesting. What do you call it? I finished. That's a very interesting title. It's a stupid title. There's no telling what it'll be about or what it'll be called when it's done. <laughs> Why, despite his poor choice and humor, your friend here has been doing much better and may soon be ready for a monitor release. What if I'd rather stay? Can uh, Dwight go instead? Doesn't work that way. It should motivate him to get better so you can both be out of here. Fall. Season of life. Birds know it. Oh, how sad. Orderly. Can you move this place? I don't know what happened to his head, but I don't want to disturb any of the patients. Thank you. Van Gogh's power over it is real. I see so much stuff that can't be that I guess I assume everything I see is just a delusion. But do I have some X-ray type vision like his? I pestered Van Gogh about all this for weeks after that day. No, I, I don't have the power of life or death. My paintings show things as they really are or will be. So if you Paint the doctor dead. I mean, if you're able to paint it, then it's it's meant to be, right? So you really want me to help you escape? Huh? Damn right I do. But I tell you, when I look at him, I see a dead man. Then paint the picture. I quit the day that bird died. I don't want my paintings to be blood on my hands. I'm through with that. <laughs> look, I can't. You know that. Look, they say that you're leaving tomorrow. They say you're cured. What do they know? Nothing. 
what does that matter for free? Exactly. Maybe we were both crazy that day. Maybe nothing we saw was real. Look, do it as a farewell present for me. One last crazy thing for old time's sake, huh? And when nothing happens, then I'll know and accept that I have to stay here. Thank you. It's beautiful. Now in an hour I have a session with the doc. That's why I want you to finish it. What I saw was too horrible. Nurse! Somebody come quick! I'm sorry. He should have stopped. What I saw. I saw more clearly than ever before. And the more clearly I saw it, I felt my mind not going but being taken. I'm sorry, I should have known no good would come of this. We're insane. Yes, we are. And that makes us vulnerable. We're weak, so we can be taken. I thought if, if I couldn't see them, they couldn't see me and I'd be safe. Or, or maybe they wouldn't want a blind man's life. Take much time to mourn my friend's final slip into total insanity. No! His fate is what's waiting for me if I stay here to be cured. So that's what you really look like. What do you think you're doing, Dwight? I don't know. Something crazy, I guess you'd say. No. Looking for my keys in that desk isn't crazy. Luckily for both of us. That's just coming back here to put them away. saw what an unbalanced mind did to your friend. If you do this, whatever it is you're about to do, take that same step into the bottomless event. More water analogies? Well, this water wants out of the glass. <laughs> You think you know everything about us, Aaron? Did you ever think that being insane allows us to see the true reality around us? That's what Van Gogh believed. Van Gogh. You know, he let you call him that because the real Van Gogh killed himself rather than live on and be insane. I'm not going to kill myself. If you do this, you're as good as that.
Is that you? I'm free now. Don't be sad. I'm so happy to find you. Okay. Okay, you got me. Maybe Van Gogh and the Doc were right. Maybe it's too much for me out here. You you won't believe what I just saw. Was it something like I don't know why I'm trying to save you. Come on out of there. Oh, come on. Oh, Padre! Oh, what are you doing? No! Oh. Imagination, or you're not gonna last out here. Gotta put the water back in the glass. So, who are you, huh, buddy? I couldn't remember anything about where I used to live. I had nowhere else to go. I figured that a dead man's not going to come home for a good night's sleep, so I'll take his place. Besides, I tried to save him. I wasn't taking much in return. You've done all right for yourself, Mr. Finch. Too bad you can't take it with you. Coming up next, an asylum inmate is loose tonight. We bought flooring for this room. We got flooring for this room free. And this room was free too. It's on again. Is it really you? Are you really here? 
I thought I saw you earlier tonight. Hello, Art. Would you see me in the bottom of a martini glass? Or did you call out my name in passion, get kicked out of some slut's house enough to come crawling back here to me? Um, no. I, uh, car was stolen. Save it. No, Ellen, I... How do, how do I know? Your name is Ellen Finch. By accident of marriage. Ellen. Stop staring at me. Ellen, I just wanted you to know that I wasn't out drinking tonight or with anyone. Oh, good. I, I love you. Not tonight you don't. Since you haven't been out drinking, I guess you can sleep in here. To repeat the top story at this late hour, a manhunt for an escaped mental patient has ended. The man was taken back to the hospital and is in poor condition after being involved in a car accident. The owner of the car is missing, but the return of the escaped man comes as a relief as he was a danger to himself and others. Ghouls, that's all these people are. I should have known better than to turn it on before going to bed. This stuff gives me nightmares. Look, I don't want to press my luck with you. Maybe I should sleep on the couch tonight. <laughs> I used to your being this perceptive. Or sober. You're saying it's unlike me? Well, that's really funny because it's true. I'm sure you'll make up for it by being extra drunk tomorrow. <sighs> you gonna turn the lights off? other a long time and uh, I've done some bad things but I want you to know that all that is over you're just gonna make me mad trying all that old change stuff again I just mean if if we don't go on together I'm sorry to have let us down now that I've never heard you say before good night Ellen Why did I say all that sappy stuff to her? If I'm incurably insane, why wouldn't I be incurably romantic? You're not the woman that came to visit me at the hospital. Maybe these women are the fantasies that kept me alive in the asylum. You're sure not the woman I saw at the cemetery. She'd obviously been hurt by this Finch person that she thinks I am. So I felt I owed her an apology. Is that all I felt for her? I don't know. How did I know her name and the, the code and... The only thing I know for sure is that this is all crazy, but I was used to that. I didn't even know what I'd wake up to, but I know I wasn't afraid. Can you get that? Yeah, sure. Artemis Finch? 
Yeah, uh, if you say so. We found your car burned out on the side of the road last night. Care to explain that? Well, the car really was stolen last night? Yeah, see? And uh, I guess whoever stole it wrecked it, right? Come on in, I'll make you some calls. As far as I can tell, I'm still me. But if everybody else is different, who am I to disagree? Come on, you'll be late. They say there's gonna be a crowd of over a hundred this year. Crowd for what? For you. They say the mayor may even be there. You know, I, I can never get these ties on straight. Come on, I have to get you there so I can get to my mom's. What, you're not coming? You never wanted me there before. Well, maybe now it's different. You're the one that seems different. Okay. So go out with your mom. How about next time? Hmm? That seems more familiar. She could definitely become my dream woman. Finch screwed this marriage up. Well, maybe I can fix that if I or things don't get out of control again. Sanity I could get used I have to. to do this, but it's time for our keynote speaker and to step up here. Please welcome Mr. Artemis Finch and his amazing success story. Oh, is that me? Thank you. Good to see you. Hi. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, I uh, don't know where to begin. <clears throat> well, you could begin talking about uh, how you got out of the institution. The institution. But I'm Artemis Finch. Tell us how you got out and rebuilt your life. Really? Okay. That'd be easy. Thought you wanted me to talk about something hard. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's, uh, it's about goal orientation. Even in the hell of institutionalization, I, I realized I had to have a dream, a goal that I could strive for. Finch's speech just came to me as if it was out of my own memory. His thoughts come to me, actually, better than my own. I still have what little memory of why I was locked up, but it seems Finch was like me crazy at one point. I certainly never met him at the hospital, but it seems like Finch was one of the doctor's success stories. If it had worked for me, It'll work for you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad you came to the room. Thanks for buying my book. I need the money. I could use the money. You look wonderful tonight. It's good to see you good to go. Thanks so much. Yeah.
Mr. Grinch, that was a great speech. And even better than the one that changed my life a few years ago. Um, I, I don't expect you to remember me, but uh, my, my name is uh, Oscar Wiener. <laughs> Oscar. Oscar Wiener, how you doing? So, what's up? You want me to speak for your group again? Well, uh, yes and you no. Know. I'm with the volunteer outreach group now. Volunteer. That's, that's very noble. But I'm afraid I must limit myself to uh, professional speaking engagements now. Oh, well, we have a uh, tax deductible stage. Oscar, stage. I. If you ever have the opportunity to hire me, so to speak, I'd be more than happy to help you out. I, uh, I just came in here to take a piss. Here's one of my cards. You're not a very nice guy, are you, Mr. Finch? Hey, Mr. Wonderful. Jackie, right? <laughs> you ready to leave? What's that, a love letter? <laughs> Hardly. Let's go. So you all talked out? Yeah, I guess so. Nice of you to let me drive your car. And where are you driving to? Maybe I've had too much to drink. Which way is it to my house? So you really want to just go home? Yeah. I'm afraid so. Um, well, why don't we just swing by my place? I, I left my cell. I need to check my voicemail. Maybe get you some coffee and um, sober you up? Sure. And there's no parking on the street, just pull in the garage. Can I help you? Are you Jackie? No. I know her, but I don't know you. <laughs> Let go of her! You're not white! Where does Jackie live? Next door! Dad, 
What happened to Mom? Nothing important. going to kill us next. Are all the doors locked? Yes. No. I never bother locking the kitchen. No. Wait. Wait for what? making a mess of things. You'd better give yourself peacefully so no one else has to die. Oh, look, just, just don't hurt me. That won't be possible. Hey, I'm Artemis Finch. She don't want to kill me. <gasps> no, you're not. Yes, I do. Where did you get that nasty little scar? Let me refresh your memory about it. Just had to be sure you were really Dwight inside there. Because as you can see, looks are deceiving. I know you. You're the morning guy. Good morning. It's a beautiful day outside. Every day outside is beautiful. Finch, Mr. Finch, Mr. Finch, rise and shine, it's a bright new day.
Oh, it's huge white. Well, you can't fool anybody in here. Ah, well, it doesn't matter. It's a good thing you nabbed white. As you can see, I need your face. Give it to me. This reopened wound is sensitive to all kinds of things. Right now I can sense through her touch just how much she hated this man, Finch. Thanks. It was my favorite. But it hasn't worked in years. When did you learn? It was something I knew long before we met. I can take things apart pretty well. But I'd rather put them back together. Where are you taking me? I think I left the shower on. I fixed it for good this time. I want to fix everything. It hasn't been like this since... Since before I was committed? No. When you were at your... Craziest? Yes. Even then, when you were in the hospital, you were always sweet to me. Mm. You know, the doctors told me that you get better, but they didn't believe in me. But you did, and it was... Wonderful. And when you came home, it's like something had changed. Like you changed or something. Why, well, that's all I was saying. No. Never mind. This is the man I fell in love with. If I'm good to Ellen, maybe she can save me from madness. And then I can, in turn, give her the love that Finch kept for himself or sold off in small pieces to others. I thought this was all just some crazy accident, but maybe I deserve to take over his life. Wait a minute. I fucking hate jogging. God, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't go jogging without these. any of that was real. I saw those faceless things somewhere around here. Huh. No 
sign of him now. This is all crazy. But I was used to that. I wasn't afraid. By living Finch's life, am I losing my own identity? No. I'm stronger than whatever he is. I can fight off his habits. Dangerous, you know. There's dead leaves on the ground. You can start a fire. Yeah, sorry. Those friends of yours? No, and neither are you. Leave me alone. See. Oh. I can see. You escaped the hospital. <laughs> the insanity is the real trap. It's one you can't escape. I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't think you hurt your arm. I wasn't bleeding before. Hey, you know, my mom used to say that pain is one way we know we're alive. Yeah, you must have had a great childhood. Yeah. <laughs> From what I've seen in my business, yeah. What business is that? Chasing people? When necessary. I'm a detective. Brent Kessler. You looked a little fright back there, Mr. Finch. I'm not that scary, am I? No, you're not. Who hired you to follow me? I'm not supposed to say. What if I paid you more than they are? Well, I reckon in this case, it doesn't make any difference. all your money anyway. My money? My wife? Why would she do that? Mr. Finch, why do women hire detectives anyway? Well, I cheat on my wife. I still do. I'm more on your side than your wife. So why'd you tackle me? Blow your cover? You look like you were freaking out, having a breakdown or something. Like you were being chased by someone. So you didn't see anyone chasing me? You didn't see me talking to anybody? Nah, we spoke in the graveyard. Since then, no one. Look, your wife's filed for divorce, hired me to collect any damning information. That's the only reason I'm here. I doubt she will want a divorce now. Well, that's up to her, isn't it? Why don't you come to my house? Hear it for yourself. Okay, it's true, all right? I did, I was thinking about it for a while. You know, our lawyer told me that I should hire somebody and get information. Okay, I believe you, and I believe our lawyer's a spineless cocksucker, and that you had nothing to do with it, but I'm asking you to tell him that. That. That it's off, that you don't want to divorce me, that he should just get hired by somebody else and fuck up their marriage. Are you ordering me to trust you again? No. Yeah, I, no, that's not what I mean, I'm sorry. Look, I'm part of the problem here, and I'm not being hired to do that. Mrs. Finch, call me and you tell me either to 
pack it in or keep it up. I'll do whatever you say. I'm out of here. Bye, y'all. Look, I'm sorry to have put you in the middle of all that. That approach isn't going to work out, Mr. Finch. I know that much about women. I know. I don't know what came over me. Of course, I knew what was coming over me. It was Finch, his personality reaching out from the hospital, jealously trying to wreck things and somehow switch identities with me again. There's some people I want you to check on at the psych ward. Check it in on old friends? Yeah, more like old enemies, but that's what I want you to find out. What's the name of this patient? First off, check up on a Dr. Shaker, see if he's still there. And the patient's name is Finn. She's... <sighs> no. Oh, I'm sorry, that's my name. Stroud. Dwight Stroud. He was in a car accident the other night. Dwight Stroud. Is this one? Yeah. There's another patient I want you to check up on, too. Yeah, what's his name? Never mind. I just found him. I didn't think you liked it. I don't. I thought this would be different. Yeah, different, all right. I love this one, actually. It's beautiful. I'm going to see if I can work out a deal with the artist. Well, you don't have to do no, that. No, no, no. Let me do this for you. Wait here. Okay. Well, well, Mr. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Actually, I used to call you Da Vinci just to irritate you. <laughs> yeah, now I remember. Um, Dwight, right? You recognize me? Yes, now I do. People out here think I'm somebody else. <laughs> Crazy. We were cured, not them, remember? Oh, hey, I have a piece of a painting I found that looks like one of yours. Crazy out here sometimes. You know what? I'll take that instead of what we have on the inside. Listen, come here. I need to talk to you for a second, okay? Uh huh. Listen, I realize now that I've recovered and my wild ideas in the hospital were just products of insanity. People out here think I'm this other guy, Finch. And be careful with that kind of talk, friend. The rewards that the real world has to offer are far more lasting and satisfying than any fantasies. That's true, but the fantasies I have left are pretty frightening. Just think of them as bad dreams. The more awake you are in the reality, the more they'll fade. I don't know. Don't feel guilty about being out here. Guilt's what put us in there in the first place. Now, if your delusions persist, get some therapy or new meds. You believe in therapy now? <laughs> what else got us out here? Listen, I gotta get back to my door in public and open their wallets as well as their minds. Uh, can I see you again? No, I don't think that's a good idea. As a matter of fact, you have better friends here now. <laughs> well, I found Dr. Shaker and I didn't find Dr. Shaker. What do you mean? Well, one of the staff here explained that uh, Dr. Shaker isn't a person. It's a, it's a room where they leave these patients after they've been medicated. It's sort of a holding area where they they keep them to make sure they don't have a negative reaction to the medication. You know, like the shakes. Dr. Shaker. They tell me patients call medication a trip to see Dr. Shaker. What's the room look like? Well, I guess there used to be a desk in here. Stroud found a set of keys in the drawer and that sped his escape. Well, that's gone, so that won't happen anymore. Keys from a desk? What else? Well, let's see, on the far wall, they got some pictures of uh, Hospital staff, from what I can see. <laughs> Old pictures. Pictures of dead people? No, I look alive in the photo. Well, no, I mean, from a long time ago. They're probably dead now. Probably. No wonder Shaker always looked dead to me. What? No, uh, never mind. Um, 
What about my painter friend? Oh, he got out, not like the Stroud guy. He, he was cured. He looked, uh, I'll call you later. Everything okay? It wasn't what I thought. I mean, yeah, we're, we're okay. He recovered enough to bring him back here from intensive care. His mental wounds are now considered to be his most important. Stroud was trying to escape? He's still trying. As soon as he regained consciousness, he tried again, so we had to restrain him. Can I talk to him? Talk Adam's more like it. I'd prefer you not get him started. What do you mean? He'll just start ranting again about how he's not Dwight Stroud, and it's a mistake, and how somebody on the outside stole his life, and he shouldn't be in here. It's... What is that called? Uh, disassociation. What, what causes something like that? Well, lots of things can, though the theory in Stroud's case is that he's trying to escape the guilt over what he did to end up in here. What do you do? Uh, I'm sorry, there's an emergency. I've hey, got to yeah, go. Yeah. Can I stay here? I'll just be a few minutes, but don't get him excited. I'll be as dull as possible. I committed. Let's not talk about that. No, really. It helped me remember so it, it won't happen again. Well, your business collapsed and you lost faith in yourself and you got really depressed and you. And? You got violent. Did I hurt you? Not permanently. You were more a danger to yourself. And eventually I got better. No. It looked like you were getting worse. You were in a coma and your kidneys started to fail. Then it was almost like a miracle. Almost. Do me a favor. If I ever mistreat you again, show me this. It'll remind me of who I need to be for you. Into the grave to be with Bad dream? The worst. I know where you are now, Dwight. You thought you killed me, but that was just a body I was using. Just like you're using my body now. I'm going to come over there and take it back. No, anywhere but here, I'll do whatever you say as long as Helen is involved.
you doing? I told you to stay home. I thought you could use the help. <sighs> sure, but it's not really dangerous. It's not really dangerous. You've been different lately, but I can still tell when you're lying. I'm not, and you really need to go. Come on, you make me drop you off in the middle of the night. You won't even tell me why. Okay, look, this guy, he's another former mental patient. He's shy, especially around women. He thinks he's having some sort of relapse. We're supposed to support one another. Like a husband and wife do? No, I'm not going. Please trust me and leave. Ah! God damn it! I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> I would never hurt you. I'm so sorry, honey. I didn't mean to grab your bad arm. Are you it's okay? okay? It's okay. It's nothing. Look. Look. There's my friend. Look. Here's what you do. Just drive around the block. And just check up on me. If you see anything strange, call the police. Okay, well, stay where I can see you. Kessler, I was supposed to meet somebody here at midnight. I, I, th I think they meant to kill me. That would be me. Kessler. Not anymore. The first time I tried to kill you, this would have slowed me down. But now...
was an ugly thing. You were an accident. Not part of the plan. In this, okay? There was an innocent man killed tonight. I think this whole thing was planned to just to set me up. out there I didn't know you smoked I got it from you don't change the subject you know when you first got sick and they put you away my mom told me that it was a good thing because you're going crazy would eventually make me go too and you know I told her off and I hung up the phone but I don't understand what's going on I think I just helped you kill somebody out there and what was that thing in the gully you didn't see anything you were too far away I'm sure you didn't want me to see it because from what little of it I, I told did you to see, leave it, it alone now why don't you just get off my ass woman and I swear to God, if you ever mentioned your mother again... I, I'm sorry. Sorry. I don't even smoke. Come on. Sit down. You want a drink? Yes. You know, the last couple days, I felt more connected to you than I ever have. But to feel your pain... To know that you were in trouble, it's... A painter friend of mine told me to feel love deeply was to be able to do that. Empathy. It's beyond anything normal. You're not drinking either? No, I... I... Who are you? I'm your husband. And I That's love right, you are now. I loved you before they put you away. But when you got out, well, you were kind of a bastard, like you were a second ago. Mostly, though, you were just distant. But you made money, and we traveled. I started collecting these everywhere we went. I was hiding behind them. Not like you noticed. You notice now. You seem to see inside me. And I'm seeing outside. I see like I'm seeing through your eyes, through your insanity. No. But you seem fine now. I somehow get your disease. <laughs> no. No, you're just a little drunk. Sorry. No, I'm not drunk. I... You drunk me? Look. Look, I've taken these a million times. You'll be fine. You'll just sleep a deep, quiet dream. Of but I don't want to sleep. I want to understand. No, no, if you understood it, you'd be as crazy as I was. When you wake up in the morning, it will be better. I don't know how, but I'm gonna make it all go away. Get your hands off my wife. She's Finch's wife, not Jonas. 
you and she's starting to figure that out. Stop touching her. I'm not doing anything, Dwight. Because I'm not even here. I know that. But I am part of your personality. I'm proof that you aren't Finch. Or not yet. Not inside here. Anyway. Why be so angry? You can assume Finch's life is lost. But as you see, that will make you into the lovable guy he was. She deserves better than that. What if Finch doesn't live? I barely call it living. He's trapped in that damaged body at our favorite hospital. To end that life? Well, I barely call it murder. <laughs> you thought those were my keys? What matters is their hospital keys. I'm gonna kill Finch. Go ahead. You're good at that. Don't worry about Ellen. She's safer with me than with you. Only trouble is, I'm not here alone. if I don't end this soon. Trapped inside of what was my body is Finch's soul, I guess I'd call it, for lack of a better word. Beast without souls. That's what insane people used to be called. That's what made you so perfect to take over for us. over now. You'll die right where you are and I'll stay in your body alive and sane. Oh! Is that your plan? To live out your life as Artemis Finch? Yes, and I'll treat Ellen the way she should be treated. Oh, and all the rest? You'll make a better Finch than I did, is that it? out for you. Oh. How did I end up in your body? After the car wreck. But I was at the point of death. You touched me. No! <sighs> Raping me. Finch's life, giving me your mindless asylum life in its stead. We're sharing souls. That can't continue. No, I can't. And you don't have long now by the looks of it. Now, at the moment of death again, I'll take Finch back. You're helpless to do anything but die, Finch. I'm not Finch. Not Finch. Not Finch? 
Finch was a mindless vacuum, an empty, insane mind that allowed me in to take his place. He didn't recover? Oh, no. He's trapped in my remains now. And where's that? You'll only find that out when it's too late. I should thank you, Dwight. I sent the detective and the other orderly out for you before, and they failed. Now, you come to me. So shall you be here, freed from the demons of your mind that tormented you, and resting in peace until that judgment day when God shall reclaim you as his own, Dwight Stroud. Well, that's the end of me as far as the world is concerned. Only I know that it's Finch who's being buried for good. <laughs> I never thought I'd be the only mourner at my own funeral.
foggy. I don't remember. Do we have a fight or something? No. Nothing like that. I still feel groggy. What's wrong with me? Not a thing. Who are you now? Finch the cheat. The manipulator. He's dead. I'll live his life my own way. Dwight Stroud's way? Then you still have to know why you went insane. That doesn't matter. It's different now. Well, if you're sane now, why am I here? Who are you talking to? I thought I saw a shadow out there. No, I was just talking in my sleep. Where are you going? Bathroom. Where are you going now? Relax, going to the kitchen to get something to settle my stomach. <laughs> It's for you. You let the ice cream out last night. It melted all over. Hello? Uh, yeah, hello. Is that you, Mr. Finch? Yes, yes, sure. Okay, great. You're speaking to our company meeting today. I am? Okay. We wondered if you could be here a little later than we planned. Uh, I can be there in an hour. That was the old time. How about right after lunch, 2 p.m.? Sure, great. And that's my recipe for success. That's very interesting, Mr. Finch. But I had some questions about your accounting formula for market research formula? I'd like you to just take us through some computations, one to one, like you did the last time you were here. The last time? Um, you mean the old days? Right. Um, sure. Let me find a good example. Here. Go. Now. <laughs> Good recovery, Dwight. Finch is dead now. Really on your own. But I have faith in you. Right. <clears throat> so, here's an equation. as you'd usually see it. Is there anything wrong? You know, math is... A tool.
what you need is purpose and drive to succeed. Fudge round. Insane. Sorry. You know, though you weren't listening at your funeral, I was. Though it's commonly believed that when we die, we go immediately to heaven or hell. That really doesn't happen until Judgment Day. Till then, we're all trapped. He's trapped in his body. I'll, I'll destroy the body in the grave. Is that the answer? Did you say destroy the body in the grave? No. Slip of the tongue. So, if there are no other questions, I'll be leaving. Well... If he thinks I'm going to pay good money for that load of double talk, he's completely out of his fucking mind. Is it really you? Oh, I, look, I'm, I'm sorry what happened at the gallery. I had to pretend I didn't know you so no one else would know. Look, I understand you want to live your life free of the past. That's, that's all I want to be able to do. What's buried there beneath my name still haunts me. I heard you died and came here to pay my respects. I came here to destroy it in order to be free. This is Mrs. Finch again. What time did you say my husband left? I don't know. Hours ago? I, I, look, I'm busy. I, I gotta go. I see you standing there. You've been standing here staring at me for over an hour. Who are you? What do you want? You love your husband. You'll follow me. I'm Mrs. Dwight Stroud. I'll show you. I'll be as gentle as possible. What's yours will soon be mine. As it should be. This is what Dwight and I lived when we were first married. The neighborhood wasn't great then. Than what's left of it now. I don't believe you. Really? I'll show you. Give me the pick. Why do you need to live on? You and I see things in the same way. I need you to see it too. Yeah. 
right down there. Does that mean? No. Good. Then there must be no trace of Finch left. That's not my husband. Look closer. What's the point? If you have the power to lead me here, you can probably make me see whatever you want. Mm, but you can't dismiss your own feelings. Haven't you noticed recently your husband's been kinder, more gentle lately? It's because he's not your husband. He's mine. Stairs and I'll prove it. <sighs> Dwight and I, we're not who you think we are. We're fluid. We could fill whatever body our emotions shape us into. Is over. I'll tell you what I know. I know you're not what you seem. You tore your eyes out the night I escaped, and now you have eyes. When I saw you at the gallery, you acted like you didn't know me at first. You look like Van Gogh, just like I look like Finch. But who are you really? It is all true. Only when we touch that I see you as white. Your soul in his body, he is trapped in yours. We see the real faces behind these masks. If Finch's soul was trapped in my body, then both are destroyed. But I'm still crazy. I'm still not free. That's right, Dwight. There's a big piece of the puzzle missing, and you're standing. I, I, I escaped. Those faceless things I saw, they were real? Not only were they real, they still are. We're still here. Tired of waiting. Three of us saw you pathetic, mindless creatures up there and decided to live through you. We ate away what was left of your souls or minds, if you prefer, and took over your live bodies as our own. Finch was taken on the first one day to leave the hospital. Then it was your former wife's turn to inhabit a life. I took the pain of You we weren't free of what you knew as Finch because what you destroyed was just some dirty clothing that his soul had been wearing. You've driven him back into his own courts. They are glass. I don't need eyes to see.
There's no spirit above this grave because it's trapped underneath. What insane thing are you doing now? Don't give me that insanity crap. I believe what the real Van Gogh told me. That what I see is the real truth. This is the body that took over Finch's life before me. This is the source. Whatever's left rotting under here, I've got to destroy. You can't escape me now. There's nowhere else to go. What makes you think I won't stop you? You would have stopped me a long time ago if you wanted to. You're too selfish to care about anything but yourself. And the life you stole from the real Van Gogh. The one who is my only true friend. Unless you'd rather go back to your original body also. You know me well enough, but don't think your desires are much different from mine. You may not have to dig as deeply this time. again. That's where you left me when you killed me. You meant to kill yourself afterwards, but you went crazy before you could finish. No. Of anything else you would force yourself to forget. Anything is horrible. No. No, you're right. I can never remember this and live. I know. And that's why I forgave you. hospital.
You can't love her. No. I came back from the dead to be with you. I took over this body and I gave you Finch. With you. I made sure you got free. We were no good for each other. Look at where we ended up. You'll kill her, Dwight. Finch, you'll go insane again. Since you want her body and not mine, this is how you did it, Dwight. Switch with her. It's a moment of death. That way, we could be together at least for a few moments. So you see, you'll have me, whether you want me or not. No, not Alan. You'll have to kill me again, Dwight. <laughs> it's what you are, and what you were. At least we'll be together for a few moments. It'll be beautiful. Don't worry. My friend Ringo had enough of his sad part in this world. He wanted to end his life a lot more than you wanted to take it from him. Well, I tried to do justice with what he created. Tell me what you think of this. It's yours to remind you of what you did to be free. I want you to finish it. It is finished. No. I want you to add my face to it. Do 
you know what will happen if I did that? I know what will happen if you don't. I know who I was now. Who I am. I'm Dwight Stroud, a psychopathic killer. And I know I'll kill Ellen eventually if I go on living. But I want you to add one more thing to it first. Touch him. He's at the point of death. Are you? Why would you let him do this? If you had touched him, you would have found out. He saved you from that. And perhaps much worse. The painting is yours. He had me finish it to save you. But it's not mine. White lived that painting. And he signed it as his own. Something in a book somewhere I just don't recall the name Some story where the heroes win Some forgotten game Victory has a certain ring the Ring of truth is fine with me Victory of the certain king Making sense of history With connection To perfection Resurrection Resurrection They keep telling us what poets say Poets too are on the list Maybe we should hear what prophets say there must be something we've missed A new dimension An exemption Redemption Looking 
for a perfect love Fools only need apply How can there be a perfect love Knowing fools are born to die You tell me I'm your perfect love You tell me that I must give Now I believe in a perfect world Say man is born to live With connection To perfection Resurrection Resurrection Not to mention Redemption Resurrection and redemption, a connection, resurrection.